happiness and cheer Fun for all that children call Their favorite time of year Snowflakes in the air Carols everywhere Olden times and ancient rhymes Of love and dreams to share Sleigh bells in the air Beauty everywhere You're tied by the fireside And joyful memories there Christmas time is here We'll be drawn always see such spirit through the year and all that we could always see such spirit through the going to be such a fun service. Uh, we're going to sing along with Landis and listen to Doug and, and uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us in person today and thank you live streamers for joining us uh, over the air and uh, we appreciate you and thanks for joining us this day. I um, want to uh, share with you that um, Doug has a, a, a wonderful service planned for us, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It'll have to do a little bit with the advent of, of the season and the uh, coming of the Christ. So let's join together at this time in prayer. And we thank you for the Christ that is within us, that Christ that guides us and directs us. And we, we thank you for the awareness that there is within us that connection with you, that you are in us in all ways. And we thank you for allowing and letting and lighting that light within us that we may shine and shine your light in the world. And as we shine our Christ light and we grow and expand ourselves in your way, we see and meet people who see the light in us, your light in us, and want to have that light in themselves. It's already there. They just have to acknowledge it. As we acknowledge the Christ light brightening brightly in us, we are so blessed, and so it is. Amen. And thank you. And now, before River Doug comes up and shares today, Landis is going to lead us in another song. Some we're going to sing with him, and some uh, he's going to serenade us. Right. Thank you, Landis. Go tell it on the mountain. Go, go tell it on the mountain. Shepherds kept their watching for sight. 
rocks by night, they hold throughout the heavens, they're shown a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain. And through the symbols and the stories and the songs, again, we bring forth that mystical experience by which the Son of God, which we call the Christ Presence, is born in our own heart. Now, the symbols we use are simple and childlike, like those which Jesus used in his ministry. Their value is in the response that they bring forth within us. Now, if they, if they give us a clearer conception of the indwelling presence of divinity, which we call the Christ, if they throw light on parts of the Christmas story that perhaps have been obscure to you, or if they simply touch our hearts in a humble way, then the purpose of this service will have been served. Now, as many of you know, the early church had a lot of competition from other forms of religious practices. And the most notable and popular at that time were the uh, pagans who celebrated the winter solstice, which was the uh, beginning of longer days of sunlight and the promise of spring and new life to come. And they did that with 12 days of feasting during the cold and, and dark winter months, right about this time, as a matter of fact. So in an effort to gain greater acceptance, the church decided to join in that festification with a special season of celebration of their own, leading up to a special Christ Mass. And the tradition of the Advent season and Christmas was born. Now the word Advent means coming or arrival. And the, uh, the tradition is marked by a spirit of expectation, anticipation, and preparation for the coming of the Christ, the coming of a greater light into the world. The symbols that they used were the symbols common to the people of the day, common to their customs, the celebrations that they had. And although their message brought attention to the qualities of being, they put together a special significance to that, to bring forth the Christ presence in each one of us. It was a time to bring forth feelings of peacefulness and knowing that all is truly well. The circular green wreath in front of us symbolizes completion, wholeness, and everlasting life. Green even in the midst of the darkness and the coldness of winter. And the first three purple candles represent the qualities of royalty the coming of the king, the kingdom of God. The first is faith or hope, the second is peace, and the third is love. Those are the qualities of being that we must experience and bring together in our life before we can experience true joy, symbolized by the fourth candle, the rose candle, the candle of the heart energy. And it's from joy, it's from the heart, 
that the Christ comes forth, symbolized by the white candle. It's a beautiful reminder of the spiritual journey, the real reason that we're here, to bring forth the light of the Christ into the world, in and through ourselves. Oh, come all you faithful. spiritual journey is to develop the faith that there is really a spark of divinity within us and that we can bring it forward. Faith is the foundation of our entire spiritual journey. And from ancient times, the prophet Isaiah said it this way, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Authority rests on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Now, most people then, and, and many people today, feel that Isaiah was talking about some person, some great savior, who would come into the world and bring these qualities for the devout. That was the foundation of their Hebrew faith. And it's what gave them uh, hope through the generations of subjugation by foreign powers. This is how they believed the kingdom would come. Jesus, however, uh, had a very different message. He taught that the kingdom of heaven is within, and it's up to each one of us to individually experience it. And it starts with faith. It starts with the ability to believe in something not yet demonstrated. It starts with the ability to believe that there is something great and something divine within us, guiding us and leading us forward. The Apostle Paul said it this way, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. In unity we believe in the goodness of God and that God's goodness constantly supports us in our life. For example, the cornerstone of silent unity, which is unity's 24-hour prayer ministry, reads, Christ is our inspiration. Faith is our foundation. 
So as we light the first Advent candle of faith, let us affirm together, my faith in God prepares me to expect blessings. In your bulletin that was handed out on the back page at the bottom. <laughs> together, my faith in God prepares me to expect blessings. for someone great enough to create that in the world. But peace is not these things. It's not the absence of conflict or the absence of challenging, disturbing, or unsettling circumstances. These things will always be present to some degree in our earthly life. Peace is born in our willingness to greet the experiences of our inner and outer world without prejudice, without resistance, and without fear. It's learning to live in a way in which we have no enemies, no enemies to struggle with, no battles to win. Peace is the ability to no longer perceive the challenges in our life as threats, mm. but as an invitation to come up higher, mm. to rise above, the conflict. In unity, we say that it's learning to live with nothing and no one against us. Peace is the willingness to be still and present within ourselves. Peace is our connection to God. It's the inner security and the inner serenity that is always awaiting our acceptance. So how do we find peace? Well, again, the Apostle Paul tells us in the letter to the Philippians. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, 
If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. You see, it's with a pure heart that we find peace within ourselves. And from that peace comes reassurance, great wisdom, courage, and strength will follow, even in the face of adversity. When we are at peace with ourselves, we become a peace, a beacon for peace in the world. As we light the second Advent candle of peace, let us affirm, I am an instrument for peace in the world. Together, I am an instrument for peace in the world. Christmas time's a time for love, a time for us to share. More than things or gifts you bring for Christmas. With mistletoe and candle to lend that festive There's no mood like gratitude for Christmas. Christmas and blessed enough are we just to spend the seasons safe with air Not out there in the cold Though sweet peace on earth Good will to all Is still a dream sublime Now's the time to fill the night Voices bright and strong. Say a prayer, then sing a song for Christmas. For Christmas. The energy of the third Advent candle is love. Love expresses itself as generosity for care, non judgment, forgiveness, acceptance. God is the source of all love, and it is the love of God that sustains us in every moment of our lives. Jesus was born to bring us the message of love, and he summed up all the commandments and simply said, love God and love one another as you love yourself. From the Gospel of Luke, God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, who said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And although she was perplexed by this situation, the angel continued, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But how can this be, she said, since I am a virgin? And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. You see, when we've done our spiritual work and are 
pure, open, and receptive. In other words, when we are loving, God's gifts will be conceived in us and come forth through us to bless the world. And even when we don't understand how this will be accomplished, and we don't think we have the ability to bring it forth, God will open a way. As we light the third Advent candle of love, let us affirm together, God's unconditional love flows through me, healing and transforming my life. Together, God's unconditional love flows through me, healing and transforming. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to me? experience the true essence of the Christ presence and its gift to us is joy. 
Joy elevates our spirits and fills us with a desire to celebrate life with boundless enthusiasm. Again, from the Gospel of Luke. The time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In the region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and the angel said, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. In those days, the shepherds were the most common of people, and they also had much time on their hands. And some would use that time to contemplate the, contemplate the sacred writings, and it was widely known that some of them had a very personal spiritual practice. In our own life, as humble as it might be, when we use the time available to us to strengthen our own spiritual practice, the powers of faith, peace, love, begin to work in our life, and they bring us great joy. It's then that the door of greater understanding is opened. And we are guided to the place where the Christ within is. As we light the fourth Advent candle of joy, let us affirm, I know the joy of living, for the Spirit of God fills me with gladness. Together, I know the joy of living, for the Spirit of God fills me with gladness. This is all of us. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every eye remain blue. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. something similar to that in our life at some point, a closer connection to a greater power, a power that is loving and directing, and that perhaps all is right in the world. You know, Jesus' message was a simple one, that we are all created in the image and the likeness of God, and that we are, in fact, sons and daughters of the Most High. 
Our mission is to realize that greatness by learning to love God and love one another. To be creators in our own right and in our own life, creating always in love. Meister Eckhart was a 13th century Christian mystic, and he said, What good is it to me if the Son of Mary was born 1,300 years ago and is not born today in my time and in my culture? And then he added, the only begotten is forever being begotten. Now his point was that the Christ is a principle. It's something that is within all of us. It's something that Jesus brought forth in its, in its full glory. It's a way of being. And it's not captured necessarily in one person. But it's accessible to each and every one of us. What good would it do if Jesus was born a second, a third, or a thousand times, or was here today, if the Christ presence is not born within each one of us? What good would it do if we couldn't feel that connection to God? What good does it do if heaven is something we cannot experience in our own life? And recall, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, the kingdom of heaven is within you. I came that you have may have life in heaven. How? Abundantly. Yeah. So we behold in Jesus the eternal Christ principle, the divine sonship of everyone, and each one of us has that. His life was a demonstration of simple loving grace, and he manifested miracle after miracle. Everything that he did he said we can do if we simply follow his example and the principles and practices that he followed. He that believeth in me, he said, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. So what does the Christ presence look like to you? Is it alive? Is it here today? Perhaps right now, here this morning. Is there something inside of you that is coming forth that you can feel right now? You know, as I look out here, I can see bits and pieces and much more than that in every eye. I can see that you've opened. Look around. You can, you can see it too. So as we light the fifth Advent candle, Representing the Christ presence, let us affirm together, Christ is born anew in me. The Father and I are one. Together, the Christ is born anew in me. The Father and I. Long time ago in Bethlehem, I saw the Holy Bible says Mary's for a child, Jesus Christ was born. Oh, 
Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night and found no place to bear the child. Not a single room was inside. Hug now hear the angels sing a new king born today. And man will in your life, but right now we practice uh, here in our time, and let's bless our offering. You know what, I did miss a part here. Um, let's take your gifts that you've already given. Okay. Our affirmation. I got excited and got talking. I just, I just, it feels so good to be generous when I do that. I just, okay. Um, divine love through me blesses and multiplies. All that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love and I receive in abundance. Yes, we do. Okay. Let's uh, bless the offering. And as we bless these gifts, 
I'm, I'm just ahead of myself. <laughs> That's not for spare change. That's for those $100 bills. <laughs> That's right. You know, when you give, this helps us with the live stream. It helps us to be able to rent a place. It helps us pay for the musicians. We have fabulous musicians, fabulous speakers, unity speakers from around the country uh, who are known for their great messages. So, Thank you for being um, generous with us. And as we bless these gifts, we send them forth to fulfill the vision and the mission of unity of Chattanooga. And the board thanks you for your continued support and your generosity. Bless you all and bless us. A few uh, brief announcements. Sunday morning meditation on Zoom. Um, you can find the link at our website, unityofchattanooga.org. Also, midweek, midweek faith lift on Unity of Chattanooga's Facebook page. If you never clicked in, it's around 4 o'clock. Uh, Shannon, our board president, and Reverend Doug have a con conversation about just about anything, actually. It's just so malicious. <laughs> We'd like to say spirit. Everything is spiritual, right? <laughs> we have a donation uh, box in the back for um, items for the homeless, and also our building fund is now over $2,000, so that we can celebrate ourselves for that, and we're, we're going to get to that $10,000 here down the road shortly, but uh, we are on our way. Next Sunday, we will be online, and we are welcoming back... Uh, our friend, uh, Reverend Teresa Lee from Unity of Hilton Head, she is a lot of fun. And she is a fireball in person, I'll tell you. I guess that red hair just shines out. And her talk will be the day after Christmas. And right now I'd like to ask Shannon to come forward. Uh, our board president, Shannon LeBron, uh, has a few words to share with us. Right. I'm not one to do too much speaking in public, but I, I just want to say, first of all, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And, um, you know, uh, somehow and in some way, all of us at some time or another have done our part to uh, keep Unity of Chattanooga alive and vibrant. Um, there are people here now who have at one time or another set up our physical environment to keep our place of community comfortable. There are people here now who have at one time or another prepared food, coffee, tea for us to eat or to drink. There are people here now who have at one time or another served on a committee, the board of trustees, maybe even volunteered their time to perform some type of outreach program in the community. There are people here now who have, at one time or another, brought awareness to our ministry by sharing a message on their social media platform, at their place of work, or amongst their friends. There are people here now who have, at one time or another, made a financial contribution to our ministry. This happens. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta stop being so nervous, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I just want to say, I think I lost my paper back here, that part. But I just want to say thank you to all of you for um, uh, your level of commitment. And, you know, our level of commitment is different. But the bottom line is we've all been committed in some way or another, participated in keeping Unity of Chattanooga alive and vibrant. You know, um, at the beginning of, of the year, we, we lost most of our board of trustees, but, but we gained a new group of board members who are even more committed to the survival and the growth of Unity of Chattanooga. 
You know, this year we gave up our in-person space during the height of the COVID pandemic, but we gained an awesome online presence that is ever expanding. We lost a minister that decided to move on, but we gained and rekindled some old relationships with some old people and we gained some new relationships. Um, we have developed some amazing relationships with some unity ministers throughout the country, which has uh, provided us with uh, some practical and purposeful unity messages. So we could not have done any of this for all of this without all of you and a select group of people that I would like to personally say thank you to. Um, so please join me in giving a round of applause to these people. Uh, one, Mona Petro. Raise your hand. Pennyworth. Uh, David, who's not here, David Nazar. He's our board member. We also want to thank uh, John and Lynn Chartier for their hard work. And we want to thank Steve and Steve Hastings and Gloria Hastings for their work. And again, I want to thank all of you, all of you for all the hard work. So let's give yourselves a round of applause. Um, and last but not least, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the membership of Union of Chattanooga, I would like to present two gifts to one to uh, this guy that I know. His name is uh, Reverend Doug Worth. Come on. Doug. <laughs> this is a guy who came out of retirement from the end of the year. We love and 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 love I would like to give to, uh, to Reverend Van Smith for stepping up her presence. And again, I'd like to give you guys a special thank you for all the hard work that you do. Thank you very much. social media um, opportunities that we uh, have. So now, uh, Reverend Doug, back to you. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, there are some small candles up here. And in a minute, we're going to invite each one of you to come up and, and take one of them. And uh, they're being given to you to remind you that you've been entrusted with a gift of God, which is the Christ presence within you. Just as Jesus became the light of the world by letting his light shine, so that same Christ light brought forth in each of us is to become the light of our world and is even to reach beyond our own world into the life of others. The candles you will receive are unlit because you alone can bring forth that light that is within you. And so this morning we want to light these candles and we want to create a circle of light that brings us together in the celebration of Christmas and the celebration of that Christ presence within us. Yet, in this special season, as our thoughts naturally turn to family and loved ones, we know that for a variety of reasons there are those in our hearts who can't be with us at this time. Perhaps their personal schedules just don't make it possible. Maybe it's COVID. Perhaps they live far away. 
or perhaps all we have are cherished memories. So today, we want to remember all of those who cannot be with us this morning. We want their spirit to join with us. And so as we bring this service to a close, we want our circle of light to include them as well, bringing all of us together in a Christ spirit. On the table in front are smaller candles. As you come forward to light your candle from the Christ light, if you have a loved one to remember that you would like to include in our service, pause for a moment and light a candle for them. And then simply file to the left and form a circle for our final hymn, Silent Night. Now I want to demonstrate how to do that. Fayanne will, Fayanne will come up and demonstrate it. Notice she's holding the candle horizontally. And ladies, if you have a nice big flowing le uh, sleeve, be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. All right. When she lights the votive candle, hold the votive at an angle with your lit candles straight up. If you do it the other way around, you'll have wax all over your hands and the light will probably go out. And so right now, Fan has lit a candle for those members, Unity of Chattanooga members who cannot be with us this morning. Dick Maddox, and by the way, this picture was painted by his wife, Peggy is with us this morning. Maya Trimble and Cindy Lou Harrington who are in our hearts forever. And so now as we begin our circle of lights let's simply say our final affirmation. I am the light of the world. Together I am the light of the world.